Yeah. Um, AP, what are your first memories of him, John? You've known him a very long time. He's a great chum. I, well, I first remember him, obviously, when he came over to Toby Bordin's and he looked about 10 mm -hmm. and nothing of him but always had the right mindset mm -hmm. always went out thinking that he was going to win no matter what he was on and it's it, and it's an extraordinary mindset g armitage who is is his pa mm -hmm. um, some job who's married to mark bradmore yeah yeah mm -hmm. she's just a, a great girl she decided she wanted to run in the marathon so <laughs> ap said to her well Will you win it? And she said, don't be stupid. Of course we won't win it. He couldn't understand why she was going to take part. Yeah, yeah. All the other 16,000 people aren't going to win yeah. it either. But that's, you know, that's him and that's... And the obsession with winning, been. bruv. Um, it is unlike anyone else in sport, I think. He's just so focused on it. Well, the, the extraordinary thing, it's been going so long. I mean, he's a serious drug addict. Hmm. People I've known reasonably well, I mean, he's seriously addicted. What he's addicted to is winning. And mm -hmm. that's the way he mm -hmm. exists, because he doesn't eat. Mm -hmm. he, and this high, and the high he gets from winning is how he keeps going. Mm -hmm. And so, picking up on what John says, if you don't win, you, can't, you couldn't go through it all and not win. Mm -hmm. So it's got to win. And of course, the thing is that he loses a lot. Remember that. He's a, I keep telling him, he's won, lost more races than any other jockey in history. Look at that. <laughs> he should be dead. <laughs> Absolutely. And the kick he gets from winning, has it crossed over into, you saw it, an addiction? A better word might be an obsession. I mean, he's completely driven by it, isn't he? Because, you know, you could... I remember talking to him years ago at Aintree, hanging over the rail at that old winner's enclosure. And he had a couple of winners early in the day, and then he got beaten on one. And the only thing he could think about was when he got beaten on. Yes, but it's, it's winning races and it's been being champion jockey. Mm. If you said to somebody, do you know what, I think I'm going to try and, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to try and be champion jockey for the next 20 years, you would say, well, I'd go and see a brain surgeon mm. or somebody mm. to begin with. The fact that whether you're going to ride for 20 years is a big enough ask. Mm. But to be champion for 20 years, knowing that you're going to have to overcome any amount of injuries, which he has. Yeah. And Richard Johnson's done the same. You know, he's, you know, yeah. he, he, he's run along parallel with him uh, for most of the way. Um, it's that will to get back, you know, God, if, if I was off with a dislocated shoulder, I had six weeks and made sure that I felt right. You know, s s he dislocates his shoulder and thinks oh, I can ride in the next race. Yeah. Completely different mindset. Um, and that's just how he is. I mean, he, he started as a kid with Billy Rock and then he went to Jim Bolger's. Do you think some of the sort of the Bolger Academy has stuck with him ever since? What he 100% he has that sort of, because he, he invokes the story of him lying screaming with his leg, leg in bits. And Boulder freezing cold, and Boulder looking down and saying, you're, you, you, <laughs> "You're never going to be a jump jog. <laughs> you'll never be a jump jog. You're far too, you're far too soft." He he invokes that story, yeah. give him half a chance, yeah. as if he's reminding himself. Yeah. But I mean, I just think it's his body is so extraordinary. He could never get the other thing that John hasn't added yet is that he's doing it at stone and a half below his body weight. Yes, at least. I mean, when he stops, he'll be twelve stone the next yeah. day, won't he? Well, <laughs> you know he single-handedly keeps the mayonnaise people going. Yeah, he's mayonnaise nutter, isn't he? And mayonnaise. There's mayonnaise on mayonnaise. And the travelling. The, the thing is, he's done it the right way. If you he's go, put the system in place. Yeah, if you go back 35 years, the thought of having an agent, having a PA, having somebody drive you out, people mm. say, you know, what are you doing? It was like when mm. the, the, they brought helmets in. Mm. People say, oh, what are you doing with that helmet? Well, now, you know, if you can do it, that's the way to do it. And it, and it was, you know, forward thinking. It's the, you know. It's removed all the extraneous stuff outside of riding and riding winners. Um, Carl Owen's great quote about he's never done the day's work in his life. He gets up, gets in the car, he's asleep by the end of the drive, sleeps for two hours at the race course, does a bit for two hours riding horses and sleeps all the way back. Um, it's true, but what is also very true is that he's had 20,000 rides and every time you go out there, you're doing 35 mile an hour, going round on something that you don't know whether it's going to turn upside down. And it's remarkable that he 
I've never ever watched him ride and thought, do you know what, I'm not sure whether he's at it today. No. Every single time he goes out there and if he was riding you, well, that's why he's in demand, he goes out there and he gives it a ride. Mm. From, the, from the second those tapes go up, he makes its mind up and the horse knows what it's going to do. Most horses fall, maybe through tiredness, a lot of the time through indecision. Mm. There's never he any indecision. It might not be right all the no. time, but there's only one way you're going to go and do it. And he's particularly good on the ones that don't want to do it. Everyone thinks racehorses are endlessly keen and enthusiastic. There are plenty that aren't, as we well know. And he's great at that, making their minds up without knocking lumps out of them. Well, he's incredibly fit. Mm. You know, he can push one and he's developed a style of riding. If you said to me, you know, do you want somebody to ride like that? My first instincts would have been said, I'm not sure. But the more I've seen it, the more I think, actually, he's got loads going for it. The way he rides, it's not a purest way of riding. It's, a, it's almost, I'm going to be stronger than you. Would he have fallen if he'd been riding Annie Power at the last at Cheltenham? I don't think he would have. She would, I don't think she'd have fallen with him on. But I could think of plenty of other horses that wouldn't have jumped as well mm. with him riding them. Mm. You know, he, he's, he says, this is how you're going to jump. And I don't care if you're not quite as free as probably you'd like to be, but this is how you're going to do it. And it works. You couldn't ever say, don't tell anybody to ride like him. And how have you seen him change, Bruff, as a, as a, as a bloke, as a man? Well, what's become very interesting is in, we've been so lucky to have these last five years, because in these last five years, he's been aware of what he's done in a, in a, in a very grown-up way, and he analyses himself. I mean, picking up what John just said, He'll say, I know I've decked a few horses, but I'll always send them. He said, my fault situation, I know it's wrong, son, but I, I'm going to send them. And the first time I remember really thinking he's a bit exceptional was when John, when he won on Mr Mulligan mm. uh, at Cheltenham. And I slightly still thought, well, he's an amazing phenomenon. He's frightfully keen and fit. I went, had a morning with him with, from Toby's when he was a first year champion jockey. But I thought... He's too big. He was in the sauna then, you know, he's about mm. eight foot high. Can't last. Can't, I wrote he can't last. <laughs> <laughs> did he? Well done. I wrote yes. Oh, well, this man finds <laughs> treasure in my new can. Yeah. Yeah. Two or three years. Yeah, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be gone. And you can't yeah. do it. Anyway, you get hurt if you keep sending him like that. Every, every jockey knows mm. you've got to look after him mm. a bit. You know, you can't mm. just send them. And he wrote it. And John said on telly, he said, you know, what the ride he's given this horse. Didn't it was a great big lanky. It was, thing, yeah. Wasn't it? You know, yeah, he absolutely. really sent it, and, and I remember thinking through. that's quite exceptional what he'd done there. Yeah, and mm -hmm. yet, answering your question about how he's changed, he has of course improved because he knows he can have the default position, but he will now be more patient. Mm -hmm. Patience took him a time, didn't it, John? But he's much more patient if he has to be now, and he can he cannot send them all the time if he doesn't have to. After 20,000 rides, I think he ought to, <laughs> you know, to be perfectly honest. You think the penny would have dropped? There has to be plenty of no. things not to go. Uh, listen, I think from day one, he's, you know, if you want to win races jumping, you've got to have the heart for it, mm. you've got to have the confidence, you've got to have the willpower, it's got all of those things going for him. Um, but I think in the last five or six years, whether it's having children or not, I don't know, but he's, he's a much more rounded person now. There was a time when, you know, you think, oh, when he packs up, he'll probably go and hang himself or, you know, won't know what to do. Now, I think he's, you know, he's much more And he's had periods of his himself. career when he was, he was very much a hunted or looked a haunted man. I remember him coming back at the, the big November meeting at Charlton, having one on side for Malta when he was having trouble with the authorities and the whip. And he threw his whip into the crowd with a look of thunder on his face. Mm. And to be fair, I think the authorities who realised they had a phenomenon on their hands did their best to meet him halfway. But there's been loads of times I've looked at him and I thought, God, you look absolutely washed out. It's a terrible death. colour. You know, early on in this early on in the season. Yeah. And you think, God, he isn't gonna last another year. And then something happens and he comes around and you think, Oh, he's bash, he looks all right mm. again then. Mm. You know, it's just as as Breath said, you know, continually going without your food. And I don't care whether you're sleeping in the car or not, you know, when you're mm. having four or five rides and it gives everything 100%, mm. then it takes its toll at the end. These last years have been more extraordinary, really. I mean, I, I really did think he was in trouble 
a couple of years ago when he had that bad fall at April at Cheltenham. Yes. I went to hospital uh, uh, with him because it was a bit of... Because no he hadn't got enough trouble already. And it, exactly. Well, but I was in the hospital and various people like Ruby turned up. And he actually, with full of gas, called his driver. And Chanel rang the driver and said, if you collect him, you're sacked. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> part of the course. So, yeah. yes. Because he said, I'm all right. And of yeah. course, the doctors looked at the x rays They weren't quite sure what they were looking at. He said, no, no, I'm all right. And he, he was high on gas. Mm. Anyway, luckily, the doctor from Cheltenham soon arrived and said, look, this chap's in trouble. He was actually in intensive care for four or five days or so. Mm. But he, I then saw him about ooh, six weeks later when he was finally riding again at Fontwall. And he came out and did, we had some old boys and jockeys, and he came out and talked to him. It was very nice. He said, look at this. And he showed his shirt. And he had, it was, you know, his rib cage was just sort of bent like a bar. So he's, he's got a sort of... Yes, thing he, like he'd literally the bent his rib cage. Broom hand, yeah. but not quite as long. So yeah. it's true. It's it's really on his weird. back, he'd be Quasimodo. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I watched, but then I thought that summer he was definitely being a bit careful. And I remember ringing up Ted Walsh one evening. So, yeah, I tend to keep And then, whatever, whether that was right or wrong, he got it going again. Mm. And, you know, he's been phenomenal. I it? watched him at Ludlow some time ago, and I thought, go on, pour your whip through into your left hand. And I said something to Carl, he said, oh, yeah, no, he's dislocated that shoulder or something. I said, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. But it's that fanaticism. It, I mean, most top jockeys have a high pain threshold. Did you? No, I think you, you get away with things. There's no pleasure in doing in riding, you know, if you don't feel But he's said. determined to overcome. Yeah, yeah. He compartmentalises that pain away in some section of his mind that he can put a lock on it. I, I've never seen anyone else quite do it to the extent he does, have you? No, no. I've never known anybody else want to. No. But, but it's ex no. extraordinary, it's that obsession mm. with being champion jockey and riding winners. And what about periods like the David Pipe years and things like that? They were very important in racking up numbers and, and extending the boundaries of his belief, I think. Yeah, I think, and also, you know, the amount of knowledge that he must have gained from being down there, working with somebody who was a light year in front mm. of everybody mm. else. Um, and I just, just r riding different type of horses and understanding, you know, what horses can do. You know, and really, when, when you look at it, you know, he went from Pete Skew, Richard Dunwoody, um, AP, all co totally committed, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. They're all of the same ilk, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. only one thing on their mind. You know, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what happens, whether a tractor comes out and runs over you, get up and keep riding it. What about his place, if you like, from the outside world's perspective? The rest, you know, he's become, is he a household name that he should be? Just, just about now, though, because the great thing is the longevity. Yeah. He's only done 10 years as champion jockey, which is quite a good slab. No one ever heard of him now. No. But going on long enough, and, and, and of course the, the Grand National and then Sports Personality of the Year, yeah. that does you it. You can't and, have higher profile. And what has been very interesting uh, in the last couple of years particularly, you know, he's had the, regularly been on Radio 5 Live, and he's, he's realised that other the, the sort of radio presenters and people, the, um, TV presenters, like him being around. Mm. They feel thrilled mm. before. He always said no one knows about racing. And as you know, he's very interested in football and things. Mm. So he's keen to talk. Like you've heard him, and he has inter chat between them. He's completely up to speed with all that now, which he wasn't. He's, he's very become a very good work. communicator. Yeah, he's but extremely I remember good. The early days, he'd appear on the morning line, and he'd sit there, sort of, kind of flint faced, and that's it. not say nothing. Say nothing. Yeah. Tell him nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, it's, it's, but, it's, it's, but it, that's what I say. The last five or six years. Suddenly, real, and, and if you see him on a daily basis, you realise that he's got a sense of humour. Oh, it's, and hugely. It's, and it's difficult not to have a sense of humour, you know, if you're involved in racing and mm. come up through the ranks as a lad like he has. And, you know, in many ways, Luke Harvey's been good for him. Yes. Because, you know, they bounce off mm. of each other. <coughs> you know, they give each other dog's mm. abuse. Yes. So it's, you know, he's helped mm. not bring him out of himself, but, you know, just let people see that there is another side to it. Yeah, and I think he kind of lets himself go on the media and, and interviews now in a way he didn't used to because he came to understand at some stage that no, the public really do hold me in high regard or love me or like me or whatever. And 
his position with the public is unique, I think. Yeah, but the other thing is he's actually, um, John's right, he is a good communicator. Mm. Lots of people, however much they may relax, I mean, just, they aren't good at communicating. He, you know, if you ask him for, look, we've got, we've got a, we need a quote about something. Look, there's a new hall being put up. Would you just say something? And can you say a, a nice thing about so-and-so? You say, OK, and I think X, Y, and Z. And you then take, take it off the tape recorder. It's a perfectly coherent mm. statement. Mm. And he's got, he's really good at that. Well, he's, he's, br in, he's, bright, uh, he's bright and he's amusing and he's got a view. Well, you look at the guy that he's been riding for for the last 10 years, <laughs> he wouldn't be riding for him if he didn't come back and know exactly what he was talking about, yeah. saying this is worth mm. keeping, mm. this wants another half a mile, this wants softer ground, you know. This wants getting rid of. The, yeah, what, what, whatever, you know, you, you can't be dealing with people if they don't mm. know you know, all the nuts and bolts. And it's amazing how many good jockeys over the years haven't known all that bit, but he obviously does. And people talk about his great rides. I mean, his great moments would be synchronised and don't push it, I imagine. Um, his great rides, there's a list of them, but I think his great rides are probably ones we've never seen at strange tracks in the middle of the week on things that should never have won. But, I mean, obviously there have been moments like which the linemen. I don't it. see anything in which it is alignment that I don't see every other day of the week mm -hmm. on something else. And mm -hmm. whether that's what you admire about him, mm -hmm. I don't see a which it alignment yeah. ride being completely unique because you're just as likely to see it in a selling chase at Subtle yeah. or faking them mm -hmm. on a Monday. Yeah. You know, it's it just happened to be a Gold Cup or it happened to be a Grand National, but actually could have been any other day of the week. Seven days a week, that's the standard that he rides to. Funnily enough, I, I had a, a couple of days with him, doing something GQ magazine of all stuff, in midsummer, and it was the hottest day of the year. I mean, it really was everybody in church sleeves sweltering, people lying in the streets, dogs panting. Anyway, <coughs> Stratford. So I get to Stratford, and I've arranged to meet him. I get there, first, ra first race, half an hour away. I said, it's, it's, it's hot there, people are in shorts also. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's AP round, he's in the silver. He's in the silver. Well, you, you don't need to. That day, he rode a horse <coughs> for, for Giles Smiley. It, it wasn't a set, it was a very low grade handicap hurdle. It was a little mare. And there were 18 runners around Stratford. As we know, it's a place mm. to have arguments. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> About who's going to go around the outside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that mare won about half a length, and it, 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 it was a fantastic performance. He got off it, and he said to the, you know, he talked to the owners for about 20 minutes, you know, well, 20 minutes, five minutes, and I thought, mm. you really are taking trouble. And he didn't need to. And the next morning, as that went, went to the palace uh, and had a coffee with him and I said okay take us through that he said well I what he actually said it was quite interesting because he sort of again he's got much more coherent he said when I get down to the start I I convince myself that it's going to win that's the only way I could do it I, I absolutely believe it's going to win you know unlikely though it may see <laughs> and it does mm. I mean that, and that's been his mindset and that's a mm. mindset on the I mean the, the lowliest as we know mm. Stratford mid evening meeting in June is not actually Cheltenham Festival, no. to put it mildly. Uh, but it was, it was an extraordinary experience. Had, but I, it's I, racking all those places mm, up mm, on those sort of days that mm. have built these astonishing numbers. I mean, you, we all remember Jump Jockey's title being won by people with 70, 80 winners, you know, in, in, going back a long time. But, you know, he rides that... In the, and the more, probably more than anything that we haven't touched on is why hasn't he lost his bottle? Why, after 10 years of riding 10,000 horses and having God knows how many falls and waking up and thinking, God, this hurts, that hurts, don't you say, hang on, I'm going to ride this thing. I wonder mm. if this is going to bury me. I wonder mm. if I'm going to end up in Oswald. He's never, Why don't never you think crossed it's his happened? Well, he's obviously thick in the, you know, he just, <laughs> you know. It, it's because he's got that unbelievable confidence in himself. Mm. There's, a, there's a stage that you get to ride him and he obviously got to it at an early stage where you think you are invincible, mm. where you think no matter what mm. situation occurs, you'll cope with it. If this turns upside down, I will still be all right, or I get its nose off the ground. Mm.
but you still got to have the mental strength and the physical ability mm. to cope with it. Most jockeys over the years, at some stage, Bruff will tell you this, you watch him ride and you think, hang mm. on, it's time you packed up. I've mm. never ever watched him ride and thought that. No. And I've seen young, and I've you know, seen see a lot of young lads mm. that ha happened, happened to them. Um, and that's probably, Richard Johnson's the same. Mm. Yeah. Never, you know, you know, never watched Richard and thought, oh God, you're windy, sod, you're going to ride. Um, but we've it, seen, it's, it's, we've seen good ones. They're both of them remarkable. I've seen yeah. a lot of good jockeys, been brilliant jockeys, yeah. champion for a year, have a good year, and then they think they've got a few It's really, really rather sad because they're, and, they're, that, and that's the end of that's the end of them. <laughs> they're riding with expertise, not with heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just want well, to your question is a very good one. I don't, I don't really know it because it, uh, interesting is he, he is the hardest man who ever lived, and yet, and this is a cliche, but it's true. We all know. He's actually a perfectly nice guy. Oh. Now, actually, it's much easier to understand if he's a dirty boss. If he was a psychopath. I said, okay. You know, a yeah. real horror. And you know, he's got very nice family, he's got, no. which is, I think, part of the trick of it. Uh, the, the family back in Money Glass are very mm. nice people. Mm. He, he's got that, and, he, and he's very aware that they're nice people. He's very proud of them. So, you know, okay, they're proud of him, but he's not a person who sort of leaves his family behind. No, he's very grounded. I yeah. wonder what Jim Bolger was thinking when he told him he was a softy. I'll bet he was just saying, yeah. I'll make something of you, sir. Exactly. I'll give, you, I'll, give, exactly I'll give you something to... And Jim's only got one way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, like pat him on the back. Or... Yeah, but I should think, you know, it's like some people, you get them to get the best out of them from different things. Mm. I'll bet, just, I'll bet, I'll bet he knew exactly the character dangling in front of him. Mm. I'll tell you, you're not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll, that'll be all, that'll, that'll be all you better. want. Yeah. yeah. When I wrote my prophetic piece saying this chat won't. Oh last, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I rang up Bolger uh, yeah. and said, "Okay, Jim, what do you make of him?" And he told me the stories of him, etc. And you know, as you know, he's extremely on the button, Jay yes. Bolger. He said, "Well, I'll tell you this: he wasn't the most talented guy I've had through, but he was the most determined, the most focused." And he said, that is the more important of the two things. And mm. he was right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, you see that in loads of sports. Because you, mm. yes, you, you can make yourself, the other things come to you. If you and talent can often be a problem, can't it? Yeah, yeah. Say, they have the talent, and they just do a few clever things and don't bother to, to graph with it. And they get carried away with, with themselves. But he's never done that, has he? Never, never at all. And never, ever spoken to him or heard him speak where you thought, hang on, you're a bit up yourself. No, no. Now, I know jump racing is a little bit like that because it keeps you grounded. But Literally, if, about if, every if, 15 yeah, if, yeah, if anybody had the right to think, hang on, but mm. you, no matter who you speak to, you mm. or anything to do with racing at all, he never, ever comes across as being remotely arrogant. It's just, you know, he's a proper guy. Um, and, you know, we, we are a bit blasé about 20 titles we got so used to these extraordinary figures he produces we knew he had to stop eventually was the newbury announcement how when that came what did you think john were you kind I of pleased he, no or i thought well do you know listen in a way it, it's what i said earlier he thinks he's invincible mm. this game will tame anybody mm. um and he's had a remarkable, I know he's been injured, but he's had a, an incredible run. When you think of how many miles and how many fences he's jumped, um, I'd have been happier if he'd got off that horse at Newbury and said, that's it, I'm packing up. Or gone on for another couple of years. I don't watch him ride now and think, hang on, you ought to be packing up. You know, I'm thinking, actually I'm wondering why you are packing up. Um, but anyway, he's made his mind up. and Because you know, he'd rather pack up than be divorced. Yeah, well, he's, yeah, well, yes, that's, listen, and I can see, listen, this, I can see both sides of the argument. Absolutely. Um, and I hope that he's packing up because he probably thinks 20 is enough, or that it's somewhere deep inside him he wants to, because if he's packing up and he doesn't really want to, A, it'll be a shame, and B, it'll annoy him about three months into next season and he'll do a U-turn much to his... I don't think he will do you. I don't think he wants to. Well, up. he said he's too stubborn to do a U-turn. Yeah. But it, it, it will cross his mind a lot. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. Because how's he going to fill his day? 
How is he going to replace that winning addiction well, obsession? Well, it won't be through golf, actually. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's going to have to find something that is... Well, he's going to... I don't, we don't know. He's going to change... But he's bright and thick. We've just been saying that. He'll find something. Well, he might. It's you, not, you it's not, it's not going to be easy. No. No, but I never, I never wanted to be a jockey. No. You know, so, and, but Richard Dunwoody, it's been a long time, if ever, that he's... It's been a struggle from it's been a, that he's, day. He's struggled but with But then it. he was forced to stop, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And that's, I think, a... But that's why, at the time that's your why, own I'm, choosing that's is why I'm saying I hope that he's packing up because he feels that he's bad enough and got enough out of it. Um, no, listen, he's bright enough. There's a million things yeah. for him to do. Yeah. No, absolutely no reason at all for him to regret packing up because life's just beginning and any number of opportunities would be open to him. Mm -hmm. you know, I think he'd be a welcome addition on the TV, but if he doesn't want to do that, he'd go on working for JP. Yep. You know, he'd be helpful there a hundred things to keep him occupied mm. but he needs i mean what he does do though he needs to have for a bit uh, that uh, speech from frank in his ear mm. i don't don't underestimate it will be difficful for him yeah i mean he's suddenly going to change it all more right. difficult for Every, him than anyone else he's going to wake up each morning with a full stomach yeah. and an empty schedule yeah. mm. and it's been for the last 22 years it's been the exact pole reverse yeah but he when he when he announced it I remember feeling a sense of both relief in one sense, but also sort of pity because actually, I, like John, I would have preferred him to say that's it. Mm -hmm. Because now he's doing this borrowed time stuff. And you think, oh, don't let's get him you know, ard out at Cheltenham or ard out at the National or something. Mm -hmm. And if he goes right on to, Chel to Sandown, then you have the last day and he doesn't have a winner. I mean, I think he'd be better off if he gets through the National, mm -hmm. ride a winner at Toast and say goodbye. You know, I, I think he wants to stop on the way. That's what I'd do if I was him. But the idea, Josh did it, I mean, much, much lower level in a sense. He'd only been champion about three times. Mm -hmm. He announced in about January that he was going to retire. And it was absolutely awful uh, because he, he began to sort of hate it. Mm. And, that have to, and people began to, you didn't want to go near him. You sort of, because he's like he's infectious. <laughs> <laughs> and funny, I mean, the, in the last ride, he went, his last ride was in the National. On a horse, for if it buried me at Folkestone, it was a horrible little thing with blinkers, wouldn't really have a cut. And he really gave it an unbelievable ride, got it round, I couldn't believe it. Um, I wrestled it to the ground at Folkestone. <laughs> and it was just a possible way to the, the, yeah. wrestling that. But no, yeah. it'll, be, it'll be a challenge for him. And I, and I hope, but I think he doesn't want to think about it until mm. he's stopped. Mm. He mustn't start listing and sitting with advisors now. <laughs> when he's stopped, yeah, he says, okay. Mm. And he can go. He can go to the Open Golf and do a few things like that. Yeah. But once he's done that, and to a Grand Prix at Monaco, yeah, all those sort of ah, things. Th listen, there's a million things for him to do. I think there's a million things that he wants to do. I think there probably are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he wants and to no door will be shut to him because he has this. He's so widely admired across a whole spectrum of, of people, from top to bottom, sideways, different Whatever sports. Whatever he wants to do, Everyone he'll, be, he'll be able to go and do it. If he suddenly decides he wants to race cars, bikes, ride a bicycle, mm. do anything, he'll be able to yeah, go. Yeah, but I'd rather he didn't do it. Really. I don't want to hear he's entering the Tour de France, really, do you? I think you no. can do that, that. <laughs> No, we don't want him walking into the South Pole, North Pole or whatever. Uh, uh, I mean, but what about the palaver of, of the weeks post the Newbury announcement, which I think anywhere, I was at Toaster the other day, and there was a queue at the waiting room, 50 people waiting for autographs. It's been the same I wonder, I wonder how been. many times he thought, why did I announce why that? Did that <laughs> I'm sure he will have done. And there is a bit of him that's been embarrassed by some of the hoopla. But he's actually conducted himself. No, he's been brilliant. Yeah. brilliant. Not the embarrassment; it'd be just the aggravation. <laughs> yeah. <of it>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not the first the on my race car. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he proved me completely wrong again. I thought this is a slightly stupid thing to do, uh, and he's handled it brilliantly. Superb. And, and it, it's it, you could say it's a farewell tour, but it's a, you know it's it's made everybody have the do chance to say goodbye. Do you know what it goodbye. is? It's a perfect example of how nice he is. Mm. I wouldn't have done it. No. And most other people, they'd have thought, God, this is going to be a pain in the ass to do that. I'll turn up five minutes for yeah, the yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell them when I'm in the Bolt car out. on the way home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's right. You know, it, but listen, you, you know, he's, he's given plenty back. You know, he's given, given plenty. He's got plenty. And that's it? been a refrain of his in recent weeks. Yeah. You, know, you, you go at, it's an owe the sport, but you've got to do things for the good of the sport. Yeah, uh, yeah. But nothing's been as good for the sport as he has. 